I am mid-30s, father of three that works 60 plus hours a week, but I have a passion slash love for the game of Dota. I think it's the most rewarding game ever created. Long investments in learning about the game, creativity, and an unwielding PMA can culminate in some of the best moments when a team comes back with a 1% chance of winning the game. I know I will never be immortal, but part of me feels that I make stupid mistakes or I must be thinking about the game wrong that keeps me permanently in legend. I am an open mind and have no ego. I am 100% willing to focus on the most minute details if necessary. Help me out, Pete. Alright, so this guy is by far the most enthusiastic, proactive, and PMA person I've ever had the pleasure of coaching. You have the right mindset when you say, part of me feels that I make stupid mistakes or I must be thinking about the game on that keeps me permanently in legend because you are right. To be blunt, that's what's happening. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's stupid mistakes I make that are keeping me from climbing all the way to being a pro. That's just how Dota is. All right, so first up, looking at the game. I'm against Legion Commander in lane, Invoker Middle, Drow Safe Lane. So you had the right idea, but if you're ever going to a lane as a core and you feel like you need the stick, just buy the one and three branches outright. Um, don't mix uh, in between and then get the, the Tangos and the Quelling Blade after. So one thing this guy said in the write-up that he sent me is that he decided this game to skip Battle Fury and just go Deso and farm supports, and then he also had a Sniper to fall back on. Two things with that. One, never skip Battle Fury on PA. Two, if you're under like 5,500 MR or so, don't use your teammates in your game plan. Be thinking about how you can win the game single-handedly. Don't use your teammates as a plan to fall back on. So th those are two things. The third thing is that for PA, always get treads before your Battle Fury, but always get both of them. The reason I always get treads is because I used to rush Battle Fury, but what would happen is that I'd get super close to the Battle Fury and then I would get forced out of lane and I'd be forced to farm the jungle um, with just Battle Fury pieces and it just completely ruined my game. So I had some really high MR player tell me to never skip treads and that has made PA games way better for me. It makes it so that you can actually hit the jungle efficiently. It makes you contribute more to a fight if you need to. So always go treads Battle Fury. The other thing you need to be thinking about when you're playing PA is that she is completely useless until she has two items whether that be battle fury and bkb or battle fury and deso so you need to be dodging fights as best as you can and splitting up the map while you're hitting those timings you are in complete mode i'm gonna try and pressure the map as much as i can but i'm focusing on farming uh my items and you're trying to get them to chase you around the map while you pressure lanes then tp to the other side of the lane and keep farming right so ignore everything else in between that period don't fight just hit your item timings. One way that I like to think about it that somebody who coached me taught me is that what is my hero meant to do in a fight? This depends on the hero, but in PA's case, she wants to jump somebody down and burst them full to zero, right? Now, if you're looking at any given game, you need to ask yourself, if I go to this fight, can I do what my hero is meant to do? If the answer is no, then you shouldn't be there. And in PA's case, the answer is almost always no until you have Battle Fury Deso or Battle Fury BKB. Those are the very general principles for playing PA, and it gets more nuanced from there, but those are the general principles that I want you to keep in mind. The other thing I want you guys to think about if you're playing PA, now that we got the mechanical stuff out of the way, um, I'm looking at their team, and uh, Legion can just obliterate PA, so I'm thinking I will need a Lincoln's this game. All right, what the hell happened here? Your witch doctor just blocked your creeps under tower. That is downright unfortunate, man. Nothing you can do about that. You should be trying to aggro those creeps backwards if you can this first wave was kind of out of your control and you did what you could with it you got that kill so you do next yeah it's good that you complete the wand i wouldn't even i wouldn't build a wraith band or any of that shit in this lane i would go straight treads into battle fury because armor won't help you in this lane and also you never want to get the boots of speed first on pa because she can blink and she just needs the extra attack speed damage and armor you only ever get boots if it's like an absolutely shit pa lane don't ever do that get the uh, elven skin first almost always okay good 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 did exactly that so yeah you, these are two ranged you just need to be aggroing these back way more like constantly aggroing these creeps backwards because it makes it way harder for them to contest yeah there's no reason these creeps have to be here and it'll it'll obviously like it'll keep the wave back you can kill your own range and keep the wave closer to your tower so and better creeps means a better start to the game which gives you a better mid game and it just kind of snowballs from there right so um, you're definitely not aggroing in near enough. You need to be aggroing like probably four or five times as much. Uh, like I've said before in other videos, I aggro probably at least 40 times a lane. Um, most games. Also, uh, another thing, like this guy, so uh, on PA, if they ever start taking damage from your creeps, you just need to dagger them and hit them like crazy. Um, and just kind of chip them down over time. Like this is psycho behavior from Invoker. The second I see an enemy in my lane do something like this, like just sitting in a creep wave taking damage, I'm instantly like... I need to use spells to keep them that creep wave and damage the fuck out of them. Um, Because if they get stifled daggered, right, like the creeps are just going to keep hitting him. You just need to be a bit quicker to identify that. 
And just to summarize core players, if you see the enemy support or core sitting in a creep wave taking damage, you need to go on them if it's safe to do so. Especially because you built the elven skin, because we're going to turn the elven skin into now. That is very strange, I'm not going to lie. That is a giant waste of money. This just delays your battle for your timing like hardcore. Um, but yeah, you, just, you need to be aggroing more. Uh, items need to be a bit better. Yeah, I think you just have a misunderstanding of... I think you're overthinking a little bit, like, what's going on and having a misunderstanding of, like, what you need to be doing. Because these are, like, really mixed match. The raindrop is good, but, like, yeah, you don't need the blade of attacks. I, I would have started with a wand, immediately got the elven skin. Or start with a wand, get the tangos, immediately get the elven skin. And then get a raindrop along the way, and then go straight for treads. Yeah, I never want to buy boots before... Like, boots is your last component. Always on PA. Um... Like, what, what does boots help you do? Like, they're not going to chase you down this lane, right? Like, you have blink. You can get on top of them easily. Yeah, and the wave is always under their tower because you haven't been aggroing enough. I think there are a lot there are a lot of big issues for you in the laning phase, Um, but they can be easily cleaned up. Okay, Legion comes down. That's unfortunate. But see, that, that's the thing. That's the problem with skipping battle for you. For one, if you play the map properly in your bracket, you will never, you will always have enough space to farm your battle fury and just carry the game simply because you have more items if you know how to play the map properly. So that's the first thing. The other thing is that Deso is so high risk. Like if you don't snowball the game with that Deso purchase, it just feels like absolute snowball the game. It just feels so shitty um, because you have, you have literally no way to farm. So basically how it works on PA is you either start with uh, the Quelling, uh, Wraith Band pieces, Tangos and Branches, or you do the Wand and Three Branches and then Fairy Out Tangos. Um, and then if you're against magic damage in lane, you just go straight for treads and maybe build orb of corrosion if you feel like you can actually get some kills with that orb. Um, otherwise, just get your treads, maybe a wand, and then go straight for battle fury. If you're in a magic damage lane, if you're in a heavily physical damage lane, then you can build things like wraith band and you know maybe double wraith band. But otherwise, the early game build for PA is pretty cookie cutter. And the reason you need those treads is because it accelerates your farm while you're building up your battle fury. And if you get forced out of lane, which happens really often on PA, she's super weak early. If you get forced out of lane, it doesn't feel like absolute garbage going to jungle or going to hit another lane. So, yeah, that's good. I don't... Why the fuck is Necro here? <laughs> uh, what is Necro doing, good sir? I'm assuming Legion was their mid. So, yeah, this is definitely the wrong place to go. In, in general, as PA, and specifically in this situation, but in general as PA, if you get forced out of lane here, your next best bet is up here. And if they've taken the tower, that is a godsend. Like, this is a, a golden uh, situation as a carry player to be up here. I would immediately tell my support to leave, and then I would TP up here, and I would farm these camps in the wave and just kind of go back and forth between hard camp, hard camp, wave, and small camp if if they'll let me. Um, because right now, you just TP mid into a level 10 Legion commander who's going to zone you off the creeps. Like This is this is all completely wasted time, which makes the, the Deso thing even worse. And then the Elven skin, yeah, it, it's very rough. It's very rough for you, right? Yeah, like what? You see the problem here? Like, yeah, you just TP'd into their fed mid, and they're just going to zone you off of these creep waves. Like, there's there's literally nothing you can do about it. When you could be up here farming all these creeps. Uh, and if you had a level in blur, they wouldn't even be able to see you, right? Um, I always recommend... The typical build is 3-1-1-1 um, one, 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 or 2-2-1-1. Two, two, one, one. Um, the early level in blur, especially if you get kicked out of lane, is so invaluable. Because you can farm waves without being detected on the map. But yeah, I, I just need you to think about, like, if you're going to TP somewhere, why are you TPing there? And does that align with your goals as a hero? And in PA's case, this TP does not line up at all. And... Uh, in most cases, against a against any mid hero, I would say that TPing mid never lines up with your goals. Um, you can do something maybe like farm through the jungle if your mid's not farming. You can farm through the jungle to mid to de-push it and then go back to the jungle. But in this situation, like your necro just TP'd bot, your sniper is farming your jungle and then you TP mid. This entire side of the map is completely unfarmed right now. This is super bad for your team in general and for PA specifically. Uh, I would say. Um, oh shit! And then you die. Yeah. I think you're just approaching the game completely wrong this match. Uh, that's the bad news. The good news is it's really easy to fix. And I would strongly suggest watching uh, pro PA players and watch how they play the map and where they go and what situations and when they show up the fights and when they don't. So I hope you TP top next or walk there. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, the right mindset. Um... Kind of brutal for you right now, though, to be honest. There is so little pressure being applied to the map right now. You see what I'm talking about? Like, if you if you just simply went treads and started building Battle Fury, you would be close, like halfway there. You would still have your mid and your safe lane tower up, and all this would be free for you to farm. 
Like, this, this is the dream setup for a PA if you went the right items. So I think you're just overthinking it a little bit. Like, in most games, you will have so much space. They won't pressure you enough that going battle for you, you'll regret it as long as you play the map perfectly. And then you'll just win these games because you just have, like, 10 more items than the other carry. That's the whole thing that PA wants to do. Uh, also, in your write-up, you talked about how do I beat Drow as a PA. And the answer to that is simply hit your timings faster and harder than her and make them more impactful. If it goes late, it is pretty tough for PA because Drow is very high armor. And the odds that you burst her down are not good. The best thing you can do if it goes late is try to kill everyone besides her and save her for the uh, save her for the end. Be like, I think you're just way, way overthinking what you need to be doing. And then once you get your Battle Fury, just keep farming until you have the item that you think you need to fight. And in this case, it would either be BKB or Deso, whichever you feel like you could get away with. And you ignore all fights until those conditions are met, right? Like... Even if they're pressuring this, fuck it. Even if they're pressuring this, fuck it. I, you don't care. You pressure here. If you see three or four heroes mid or bot, you take that advantage to farm all this shit, right? So yeah, I think I think you're just kind of overthinking what needs to be done, how, how to play PA. I think that gives you enough to think about with regards to those things. I'll look at some other like macro decision-making things here. One of the reasons that uh, I've heard BSJ talk about a bunch, uh, one of the reasons Tundra won TI, they know what they want on the map and they'll just walk at heroes to get them out of the way. So one other thing I want you guys to think about, and Tundra does this really well. It's one of the reasons they won TI, but like when you're just kind of doing your own thing, right? Like in this PA scenario, he has his micro game going on of him trying to hit his item timings. And then he also has the macro game or whatever else is going on the map, right? Now, the carry is usually in the same mindset. And if you're in a carry matchup where you can zone the other carry, that's what you should be focused on while you're farming. So like in this case, I don't think this drow could really fuck with you at all. Like I think if you blinked on her here, and just chase her down with stifling. Like, I don't think there's anything she could do about it. And it would just zone her out of the area to farm. You could even put a ward down here um, to see where she's farming. And you could jump her while she's farming. You could take her camps from her, which would be hugely impactful. And you don't even have to kill her. But just the fact that you're there zoning her has so much impact. And so, like, this decision right here to walk backwards is so just, like, it has so much negative impact. That's the best way to, to describe it. Because you're letting the drow farm. And you're, you're, like, this is, these should be farmed when there's nothing else better to be done. You can't zone anybody. There's no other camps to be taken. Um, and the reason I say that is because this is the most passive farm on the map. This accomplishes nothing on the map um, by being here. Whereas this drought could be easily zoned. You could have a ward here. You could be taking her camps. You could be zoning her off the farm. And then naturally what she'll do, because she has no idea what the fuck she's doing, she'll go to the other lanes and she'll steal their farm. And then now just by that one decision to go zone the PA, you're now crimping the farm of your other or the other cores in the enemy team right so and that goes for any core player if while you're doing your thing you can just walk at the enemy and get them out because they can't man up to you then you do it um you need to be calling clarities and yeah just sell the elven skin like there's nothing you're nothing good is going to come in that elven skin <laughs> no offense intended <laughs> but like you've been in here for so long and drow's just farming goes back to the whole like how do i beat a drow again you hit the item timings faster than her and you have more impact with them so as a pa all you need to do is play it safe till you have your Battle Fury plus one, win a big fight, and then go roach with your team. And then you play here with that Aegis. With wards. If anyone walks up, you kill them. You go high ground if the opportunity allows it. If not, you don't force it. You just farm a huge gold leap with the first Aegis. And then you control this area, take the second Aegis. And then you win the game. And if your team won't play with you in the way that they need to, then you just do your best to dodge fights that don't accomplish anything and just farm your items. And then show up to that one impactful fight with your tons of items and just clean the floor with everyone. That's why Smurfs never lose. Like, what is your sniper at right now? Do you have mid tower? So you have mid tower. Your sniper is level 13. He's owning. You guys could easily take Roche right now, in my opinion. Or you could at least force the matter. Like, you could force them into a Roche fight that I think you guys would win. Um, but by your support steeping bot, like, fuck this tower. If you're in the lead, just play here. Also, your Necro is griefing you by being here. The thing is, like, mid should be your last resort. Like, only come here if you're blurred and there's nothing else good to farm. Um, because it makes it easy for you to get ganked, right? Like, no matter where they are, if they're here, 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 or here, you will get ganked. Exactly like this. Um, and also, the reason dying mid as a carry is so bad is because it doesn't take much to get to mid and kill the carry. And then from there, they can kind of go wherever they want, right? Like, whereas if somebody... If you die up here to three heroes, it's much better because you're here. your team has all this space to themselves. Because they see three heroes go up here, they can pick anyone that's solo here, and they have all this space. But now, if you die here, they can easily connect and force your team out of this area, right? So, I only come here as like a last resort. And don't show on a wave with heroes missing like that. So, like this, this is one of the... the okay. Also, 
triangle fights, unless you have Aegis and you're way ahead, complete fucking suicide. Don't ever do them. Oh, shit. I didn't even know you were TVing. <laughs> Bummer. Yeah, like, this is another opportunity. And, like, it'd be even better if you had Battle Fury, right? But, like, this fight is so useless and so throwy. It is so hard to fight in an enemy's triangle unless you have a huge lead and or an Aegis. But look at this. Look at how much... There's, like, one and a half thousand gold from here all the way to top that you could be taking for free and said you're going to this fight that literally does not matter you still have all of your tier one towers up like fuck your teammates fuck your teammates if they die that's on them like they deserve it for taking this triangle fight and i and i get that that's the mindset you were in because you went deso um i just think that's not the that's not where your mind should have been but I hope you kind of have a better understanding of like what kind of fights you should avoid. These fights are really easy as a carry player to decide not to go to. If you see your teammates walking with no Aegis and no significant lead into the enemy triangle, you say, don't go there. Um, and you don't go. <laughs> you look for somewhere else good to go. Yeah, because like if you went Battle Fury, like you see what I'm talking about? How about how there's not enough pressure to make Battle Fury ever not worth it? Like you would have so much gold right now. You'd be so far ahead in this drow. You'd show up to one fight, you'd be like level 16 with Battle Fury and Desolator, and you just obliterate everything on the map. That's the other thing. If this, like, let's say you did go Battle Fury and Deso, and you saw this fight happening, do not go there. It's another one of those fights that's like, when you hit those timings, don't force fights that you know are bad. And going into the enemy's triangle counts as one of those bad fights. Just bide your time, continue farming your items, and if you see a good opportunity to show up with your farm lead, then go wipe the fourth people and then take Roche. That's what your mindset should be as a carry player. Um, and neither do pro players. Like, they don't get it right 100% of the time. But I hope this helps kind of shift your mindset in the way that you approach the game as a carry. And also, you can kind of extrapolate some of these concepts from PA to other heroes. So if you're playing other heroes, for one, I would strongly suggest picking three carry heroes that you play and you stick to those three heroes, you figure out how they and their power spikes work, and you play only those three heroes. Do your best not to play a bunch of heroes, because there's there's so much that goes into playing a hero well, way more than people give it credit for. So I would stick to three heroes, figure out their power spikes, how they want to play, and also just think about what do I need to do my hero's job? What do I need to have impact in this fight? And if you don't have the items necessary to do that, don't show up to the fight. And only show up to fights if it's an actually impactful fight. If you have all this farm available to you instead, fuck these stupid fights. Go farm. Like, when I when I got this advice and I started applying it, I went from Legend to Divine 1 and, like, I was playing a stupid amount of Dota at the time. But it, it took me, like, a week or two to go from Legend to Divine 1. Carries don't start getting this shit right until, like, 6,000 MR or so at least. Like, you will still see people fighting with a naked Battle Fury at, like, 5,500 MR. Um... So if you get this shit right, like, it'll help so much. So anyway, I think that is a pretty good chunk of information for you. We're going to see more coaching sessions from this guy because he booked a few of them. So I'm really excited to work with him and see his progress. Um, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that was helpful and I'll see you next time. Peace.